In this video I just wanted to chat a bit about the EU energy ratings and also the EU labels. In September 2014 the motor power for newly manufactured vacuums was capped at 1600 watts and this was further reduced to a maximum of 900 watts in September of 2017. The intentions were noble and were to try to reduce the energy consumption and the environmental impact of vacuum cleaners. Some vacuums actually use 2.2 kilowatt motors, which is more than a standard winter room heater. Additional changes in 2017 included limiting the maximum noise level to 80 decibels and requiring vacuums to pass two durability tests, one on the motor and another on the main hose, presumably to force improved reliability. Implying many manufacturers were getting away with shoddy products leading to wasted money and wasted materials in landfill. Also in 2014, um, a label and rating system was introduced and I'll discuss more about that later and the problems it caused. A lot of people's initial reaction to the EU rules was that reducing motor power would automatically make vacuums much worse and perform less well. The motor power in watts is actually a measure of the input power or the power consumed in running the vacuum, but it doesn't automatically translate into better cleaning performance which is actually a net result of many complex factors based on the principles of removing dirt from flooring, which I'll discuss in another video. Many people and groups out there who get to try a range of vacuums have seen this as the case, with many low wattage machines cleaning better than more powerful ones, and it's all down to the design why this happens. It turns out that as of 2017, vacuums with the market leading performance can achieve better results than anyone by using only 700 watt motors. So this shows you genuinely don't need more than 700 watts to produce the highest levels of cleaning performance and it is a genuine myth that more powerful energy guzzling motors clean better. Really smart and efficiently designed cleaners can actually outclass brute force machines which damage the environment. So a 900 watt motor limit is still actually very generous. What is good about this motor input power limit is that it helps prevent the lazier manufacturers from either cheating or taking shortcuts by brute forcing performance from badly designed inefficient machines just by racking up the power it consumes to compensate for design shortcomings. Vacuums now actually have to be genuinely good to be truly the best and the cheeky shortcuts have been closed off. Now unfortunately while the EU energy caps are a really positive thing the associated labelling is really bad it's misleading and completely unhelpful and I wanted to explain why that is because it's really interesting and many people might not be aware. The EU rating labels that you find in the appliance boxes now were introduced in 2014. They showed an A to G rating on a range of factors such as energy use which is essentially the motor input power I've just discussed, its cleaning performance on hard floors and carpets which are the two most common home floor types, how much dust is blown back out into the air by the vacuum that you have to breathe back in, and also how loud it is. In 2017 these were updated a bit and the energy use ratings now range from A++ to G. So on paper this all sounds good and informative, except it isn't on closer inspection and there are some major problems. These labels are supposed to accurately inform a user about what they're getting but currently don't achieve anything like that and this is widely agreed by many individuals and groups out there who have got experience in using a wide range of vacuums. So what are the problems with this rating system and why is it not very good? Well firstly these ratings are really easily cheated by manufacturers and this is amazing when you read about it. It turns out that vacuums only need to be tested in brand new pristine right out of the box condition to get their final ratings and this is in stark contrast to literally every other consumer appliance out there from fridges, washers, dishwashers and even cars. These things are all tested fully loaded under real world conditions and loadings and not only when brand new or empty. And it's obvious why. Being new is a temporary initial condition and almost all of a product's lifetime will not be in new condition and will instead be worn and used. Vacuums, and especially the less well designed ones, tend to perform much less well when not new and have got full of dust. So only testing when brand spanking new is not representative of the kind of performance you'll get after just the first use. So how do consumers know what they'll really be seeing day to day once it's got a bit dusty? 
and shouldn't we really be told this instead? Another big way manufacturers can cheat the system is to increase motor input power when the product gets clogged and loaded with dust. So when it's new and clean and empty, some vacuums can work fine, but as soon as you get dust in there, they suddenly struggle and the onboard circuitry jacks up the power to compensate by brute force. And the ratings don't even catch this because they ignore 99.9% .9 of the product's lifetime and only consider it in its pristine brand new condition, which is crazy. So while some vacuums may get an A rating on the label for energy when brand new and clean and be seen by consumers as a really good product, they'll very quickly drop to much lower energy ratings for the rest of its life. For example, it turns out some 750 watt vacuums later draw over 1600 watts when they get clogged and for the rest of the lifetime, and that A machine drops to an E or an F rating. And because the labels don't capture this, consumers are being deceived. They think they're buying a really energy efficient vacuum that's cheaper to run, but without knowing it, they're buying a really gas guzzling mess, and it's scandalous. I've never seen anyone demonstrate universally that the labels equate one to one to the performance and practical experience you get during use. Nor has this ever been my experience. And so another issue with the EU labels is with the value of the carpet or hard floor cleaning performance rating. What does it really mean in real world terms that a vacuum has, say, a C rating on carpets relative to an A rating? How is it even tested and how do those tests represent real world use? It doesn't say anything on the label. Manufacturers test the cleaning performance of the machines using industry standard IEC 60312 which I'll discuss in another video, but the EU labels don't make it clear how they test or determine a rank. It's not clear what the difference is between an A and a C rating, it's just some vague letter. It turns out the real world difference in day to day use in cleaning performance, in the top few grades at least, is likely fairly small given how vacuums are normally used. Also high ratings don't necessarily equate to a good vacuuming experience. A good example of this is that some A-rated performance cleaners can have heads that suck too hard on the floor and are permanently really hard to move. Or to achieve an A-rating on carpets, some perform really poorly on hard floors and snowplow large debris. These ratings don't consider different types and sizes of dirt particle from fine dust to cereal. There's no consideration given by the labels to the overall holistic performance, i.e. an overarching consideration of all floor types, or what usage experience a consumer will have with a given product, and many other factors. There's a suite of metrics which I'll cover in a separate video outlining how I feel a vacuum cleaner can be best judged in a holistic way. What's even more confusing is that when manufacturers test formally to the industry standards, their performance data doesn't always match what the EU labels say. The labels are a complete mess really. Ultimately there are two best real world considerations in a vacuum for a consumer. Firstly it's holistic efficiency, so can it achieve best results on the market on average across all floor types while simultaneously using the least resources and having minimal environmental impact? And secondly, does it have an optimised user experience? So we know it's possible to design cleaners that have no additional running costs require minimal, if any, user maintenance, and have maximal ease of use in all common household vacuum cleaning tasks, including use of accessory tools and transitioning to different floor types. Often these factors conflict, so compromise is always required in a given design. But we know it's possible to achieve all this in the very best designs, and it makes for the best vacuum use and performance. So designs which do achieve this should be labelled as such in a simple, user-friendly way but the EU labels provide none of this informative real-world information, so people are left completely in the dark, really. Interestingly, the vacuum manufacturer Dyson took the EU to court over the labels shortly after they were released in 2014. They argued pretty much what I've said above, and th that they were flawed, weren't very effective at informing consumers about things that are relevant to vacuum usage, and ultimately were quite misleading. In 2015 though, they lost their case on the grounds they didn't demonstrate that there were more reliable and accurate tests for cases when vacuums weren't in the um, as-new condition. Apparently they were pretty unhappy about this and weren't convinced the rejection was well grounded. Some have suggested that they felt the European courts were swayed by the big European manufacturers who stand to lose out from inadequacies in their designs being exposed by more detailed and open testing and labelling. Dyson appealed this decision, and to much surprise, the appeal panel also felt the same, and 
did think that they had a valid case and were unfairly dismissed by the original court, so granted them the appeal in May 2017. So Dyson now have a good opportunity to go back to the original court and argue their case, and possibly propose a test suite that can demonstrate a reliable test methodology for dust-loaded vacuums. It's definitely worth watching out for because the EU labels are clearly inadequate, and a Dyson victory on this would only be in the best interests of consumers to help them make an informed choice about whichever vacuum products they choose to buy. So in summary, the 900 watt energy cap is seemingly good in every way that it's set out to achieve, and it ensures that only the best technology and designs can truly achieve the best results, regardless of what the currently flawed labels might say. It has been convincingly demonstrated that with good design, you can achieve the very best results using only 700 watts, so the 900 watt limit is still extremely generous. Lately, you might have seen people arguing that you should snap up um, the 1600 watt models while you can before they disappear, but this is faulty logic, really, for the reasons I've outlined in this video. There's no need to preference a high input power vacuum, and if anything, you're shooting yourself in the foot because there are better performing, more efficient vacuums out there. The EU labels, as of 2017, are completely unhelpful and don't provide a holistic measure of real world performance the environmental impact over a product's lifetime, or how consistent the performance is with time and usage. Nor do they tell a consumer anything about the real-world experience in using a given vacuum, such as how convenient it is to use for all common tasks and how it copes with various messes. I've outlined in another video what I feel the important criteria are to measure the holistic performance and experience of a vacuum in real-world conditions, and the EU labels would benefit to at least alter to provide some of those metrics.